points are the first one is the one idea on one, one thought about the UK's prominent role in the European Union until now. The second point is about uh, the UK's good shape. A third point is about the European Union bad shape. A third point would be about the big picture, the word big picture, and how to uh, deal with, uh, and this is the fifth point, how to deal with the referendum issue in this big picture. And the fifth point would be <coughs> my conclusion about uh, uh, the post uh, 23rd, so the, the 24th uh, scenario. And uh, my conclusion would be ab about the two circles Europe, that is in my view the, the key solution for uh, the post uh, non not Brexit uh, uh, scenario. And I will try to argue on uh, how to, uh, to, to reach this sol final solution and how to uh, have this uh, final solution, as we say in Latin, ex malo bonum. And this referendum is, is, uh, is malo, uh, but we can have ex malo bonum, uh, and that could be a happy end. This is why I'm here, this is why I'm so interested in this topic. So, my first point is about the UK's prominent role. That is maybe interesting for a UK audience to hear about the role that the UK played in these decades in the European uh, Union, in the European uh, milieu, in Brussels, in Strasbourg, uh, because I think this is a, a, a sort of hidden point, maybe also here in, in the UK's debate on the topic. The UK played a, a very important role until now in the uh, European construction. Uh, there are many uh, examples, many issues. Of course, I can mention the easiest is the single market, but on the single market, the role of the UK was absolutely decisive to reach uh, the important goals and to reach uh, the situation that we are uh, experiencing now. Without the UK, it would have been impossible, I think, to reach such a, a single market like it is uh, today, but it is not only the single market that is the big totem, I would say, but it is also about red tape, the big uh, issue that is for uh, the UK always in the European discussion, one of the main issues, and it will be decided for the future because it, it is becoming more and more a crucial issue also for uh, all the other public opinions in Europe. It is not just uh, uh, an UK topic. Uh, in many countries, also the most bureaucratic country like mine, we are a public opinion fighting against red tape. And to have the UK's uh, push and support for a less bureaucratic Europe, I think is one important asset for the future. But also, uh, I, I, I have to mention the foreign and defence issues, uh, to, 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 the, the role of the UK on, on these topics it is not now the moment to, uh, to go there, but uh, I have to mention it. But what is for me the most interesting point is about the mood and the attitude of the UK. That was always the most diligent and serious a uh, scholar, I would say, in, in, in the class, with always the best performance in the enforcement of the European law, and I come from a country not in the first two or three positions, <laughs> that kind of, uh, uh, with always a very serious uh, attitude, being there and being very, very uh, diligent and courageous with leadership for many years in many fields. And I think it is important for the UK a public opinion before taking such an important decision to know and to be completely aware of this point. That is a little bit hidden in my view in the uh, debate. Uh, and this is in my view one of the, this is why I decided to 
uh, start with this point. My second point is about the UK's good shape. Because one big topic, one argument for the uh, Brexit campaign is, of course, is about the UK uh, great performances in a European uh, Union in a very bad shape, bad performances, so it's better to leave because alone we will perform better. And my uh, argument is, of course, exactly the opposite. And I think the UK's good shape can't be shown as a reason to leave the European Union. But maybe the opposite is true. Uh, the UK's good shape, I think, is also because the UK took great advantage uh, of being part of the single market and of the successes of the single market. And of course, first of all, London. London as uh, financial capital of the world. London wasn't the financial capital of the world uh, before the single market success. Uh, London became the financial capital of the world as it is today also because of the single market. Because we are in the richest area in the world and the single market and being without borders is one of the key assets uh, to, for the success of London. Of course, it is not possible to say that the future will be the same being out of the single market, and it is not possible to say uh, we will be in the single market uh, uh, as Norway is today. Because, frankly speaking, I don't think that Norway can be the good example or the good model for the future of the UK, for the future of a UK out of the single market because of the fact that Norway is in strict links, ties with the single market, but Norway is, is there just accepting the rules of the single market that we decide, we Europeans, we decide. And of course, Norway is, is a small country, so they can be in this kind of situ strange situation with being part of a club, accepting the rules, and not being at the table where the rules are decided. I can't imagine the UK in the same situation of Norway to be in a club in which they accept uh, the rules that we will decide in the future on the single market. That is, in my view, a, a key issue. The third point is about the European Union bad shape. That is, in my view, one of the key issues in this discussion, because the main point is about the fact that today we are living in a period in which uh, the European Union is in crisis, in a crisis, uh, two crises in a row, with the name crisis, the word crisis is there uh, for the, the last 10 years, from 2000, end of 2007 we started to say crisis. Crisis. Now we are in 16. So crisis, European Union crisis, Euro crisis. I think it is necessary to say that yes, we are in crisis. There is a European crisis. But it is also necessary to say that the European Union is not so bad as it appears. For two, some reasons. First reason. For the first time, we, uh, we are facing two enormous crises in a row with a sequence, and it is, I think, it's so impossible to say that the, the first crisis, the Euro crisis, is over, but we are with two enormous crises in a row. Second a point on, on, on crisis, both crises are affecting citizens' uncertainties, citizens' personal concerns, personal life of the citizens' concern. Security, uh, uh, unemployment, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, these crises are the crises of the normal life of uh, European citizens. 
Third, both crises, the Euro and the refugee crisis, with the European Union, I'm prepared on these two issues and without any toolbox for these two specific issues. Now the toolbox on the Euro is there. I don't know if it is enough, but it is there because ESM, Banking Union, half Banking Union. Uh, uh, quantitative easing and so on and so forth. So the, the toolbox is there. The toolbox for the second crisis, for the refugee crisis, isn't there. And I can't imagine that the deal with Turkey can be considered as a toolbox. It's just a, a small step in a big discussion we are entering in to find a final or a general solution to such a big deal. But the key point in my view, linking these two crises is the fact that both these crises were the worst in their field ever after the Second World War. The financial crisis and the next, the, the, the steps, the, the, econo the real economy, the social crisis, the political crisis, the deepest after the World War, and also for the refugee crisis is the worst the deepest one, uh, deeper than, rather than the one we had after and around the uh, Berlin Wall fall in the 90s, uh, the very beginning of the 90s. Today we are facing the, an enormous crisis with dimension absolutely unexpected and, uh, and I think it is important to say that uh, the referendum is taking place in this very in this particular situation. That is important to, to put in a context, in a framework that is a very specific and very particular one. Because yes, the European Union is, is in bad shape, but uh, the EU is in bad shape because of these characteristics that are absolutely peculiar and we can't uh, uh, avoid to think about it. My fourth point is about the big picture. When a referendum like uh, this one takes place, I think, of course it is easy to say, it is very difficult to apply, it is important to think about the long term, because it's a referendum that will influence the next 50 years, maybe, of the UK and the European Union uh, discussion. It, it is impossible to think that after a, a negative result, after Brexit, uh, we can have a change in the next uh, 10, 20 years. It, it is absolutely uh, unthinkable. And uh, we can't imagine also that contingent historical circumstances can be decisive for a choice that will influence our life for uh, decades. I think the Italian uh, choice to be member of the European community at the beginning, at the very beginning. As you know, Italy wasn't in the first, immediate first ranking. Italy was really the sixth. The, the, the first group was the, the two with the Benelux. And uh, after months and, and years of discussion and with uh, the, the political determination of Alcide de Gasperi, so the, the real leader of, uh, of, of our country, we, uh, we, we, we were there. Uh, and it was, in my opinion, the choice that influenced the political, the economic, the social life of my country for 50 years. Because being in at the very beginning was the choice that uh, had a very, very important influence since the beginning and for the, Itali the famous Italian economic miracle. 50s, 60s, it was an economic miracle due to, the, to this choice. So, um, I think it is important to know that this choice is not for the next elections, it's not for the next two years. It is a choice for 
the next decades. And I, I think on, on, on this point, it is important maybe to, to try to think what would be the future, what would be the, the balance, what would be the framework, what would be the world in the next 20 or 30 years. Because being in or being out, what will be the word, which will be the word framework in the next years? And uh, it is very easy, my point is very easy. My point is that uh, uh, we were, some years ago, the European Union, in comparison with China, we were altogether 30% of the world economy and uh, China was the 2%, 30, around 30 years ago. Now we are at the same level. Now we are at the same level, European Union and China, and they will uh, overcome uh, us soon. My point is about the future. The future of the world is a future in which I, if I think the world, if I imagine the world uh, next 20 or 30 years, I can't imagine uh, the table where the decisions have to be taken with four, three, five, six chairs for European uh, actors. I can imagine that there will be the possibility to, uh, to have one chair for this part of the world, but maybe one not four like it is today, or six out of nine, if I look at this crazy situation of the G7 now, where when the greatest leader in the world they meet, they meet and there we have six European people out of nine because of the four plus the president of the European Commission plus the president of the European Council and then the Japanese, the American, and the Canadian. Uh, it is clear that the role of Europe, of the European countries in the future, can't be the same that we had in the past. And that is crucial for the UK too, I would say. That is crucial for Germany, that is crucial for France, for Italy, for all the European countries, but for the UK too. We, I think, the future is a future in which uh, the European countries divided will be less influential, less influential in the world. That is the key point. United, we will be able to be influential and we will be among the rule setters. If not, we will be among the rule takers. I repeat, I'm not talking about now, today or 17 or 18, but I'm sure that in 2030 or 40, this point will be a crucial point. That is not a pessimistic view of the future. This is a very realistic one, and I'm sure that the European Union, the European countries can have a decisive role if we are coordinated and united, because uh, scale matters. Dimension matters in the future. And uh, I would say that uh, the European countries in a global perspective are divided in two groups. It is a joke, that is more than a joke. Between one group, those knowing they are small, and a second group, those not yet aware that they are small. And this is, for the future perspective, of our presence in the world, a discussion that for the UK too is a crucial one. I know that this is a very difficult argument for an, uh, a referendum campaign, but in terms of a long-term decision, this point is absolutely uh, fundamental. My fifth point is about how to deal with the referendum issue how to transform a constraint in an opportunity, <clears throat> and also what can be, which can be the continental European contribution to 
avoid Brexit. I know that is a very difficult and sensitive issue because we have to be really cautious on that but because we, the southern Europeans, with some wrong words, we can be very negative. We can have a very negative influence in the uh, truly internal debate in the referendum. So I think we, we can have a very negative influence. I want, we want to avoid Brexit. But we have to be very cautious, and what I mean, I, I say that uh, uh, we are in a period in which the discussion about democracy, about participation, about uh, uh, the role of the elite, establishment, people, uh, what is happening in the, U in, uh, in the US uh, primary elections is, I think, very interesting. We had in Sciences Po uh, some, some days ago a one-day discussion with the German Marshall Fund, with many American uh, experts there, with all our American students. And it was really amazing because at the end of one day of full immersion in the discussion on the uh, US primary elections, uh, the, the final check was, okay, <coughs> we had a very good discussion. 95% of our time we spent on Trump and at the end of this discussion we said Clinton would be the next president. <laughs> so there's something wrong in this discussion and this point is about the role of democracies, the situation, the traditional parties, what happened in Austria two days ago, I think is a, is a key topic for the first time a non socialist or EPP uh, president of the republic uh, and so on and so forth so I don't, I, I don't want to be long on that but the key point is about uh, it is necessary to, to focus the good contribution, the positive contribution from abroad and I think the only positive contribution that we as non-voters uh, in the referendum and against Brexit we can have is to take seriously the referendum process. To take this referendum process seriously and to say it is an opportunity for the UK and it is an opportunity for the European Union as a whole. And that brings me to my sixth and final point that is the, how to move towards the two circles, Europe, that is the outcome of taking seriously this referendum. Is to say, in my view, as pro-European as I am, after the birth of the European Union, the second big step was 85, the single market, uh, birth. The third step was the Euro in Maastricht. The fourth one was the unification. And I think we are in this year, 16, the referendum can be the fifth big step in the European uh, Union history. And the step can be the fact that we put in a corner definitely this idea this ambiguity that from the beginning we had to be all running towards the same destination. That is not true. We are not doing the same path towards the same destination. This formula of the ever closer union is in my view a very ambiguous formula because it's not uh, what we share. When I say what we share, I say the countries of the Euro and the UK. Because it is clear that uh, the UK's idea of being in the European Union, if Brexit is, uh, uh, is not the option, is to share policies with the rest of the European countries, but without the ever closer union 
as a destination, as the final destination. So I think the only possible outcome is to move towards a new step in the European life, that is the formalization of the definition, the clear definition of a two-circle Europe. A larger Europe, the 28th, and tomorrow the 29th, the 30th, with the goal to share the single market policies, the uh, foreign trade policies, foreign and security policies with the rest of the Euro area members without any risk, I would say, to go further in, 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 uh, in a federal integration at this 28th, 29th or 30th level. And allowing, clearly allowing, the core Europe, so the Euro area members, to go deeper and to have further integration at that level with the completion of the economic and monetary union at that level and having so the possibility, in my view, to save the Euro, that is, uh, uh, in my view, a big risk for the future without the big E of the EMU and not only the big M not only the big uh, monetary union, but also a big E, the big economic union, because the euro without an economic union uh, it, it is a big risk. And in my view, this is the only win-win solution that is uh, possible. Of course, to uh, go in that direction is needed to avoid the big risk of this uh, sleeping year that we are risking be because of the German and the French elections. <coughs> so a, a year in which we, we are supposed to be obliged to wait until September 17. It's impossible, in my view, to wait until uh, September 17. Uh, it is not possible with the running of events in this very period to wait for one year the German and the French elections because before the, uh, for doing something in, in that direction. And I think it is necessary after the 24th of June, but announcing it clearly before and saying to the British public opinion uh, that, that we want to take seriously uh, this referendum and we take seriously this referendum and this step will be the fifth step in the European life. So for the UK it will be another way to stay in Europe and for the rest of the European countries uh, it will be the way to be successful in a time in which uh, we need to change and not to uh, continue business as usual. My conclusion is that uh, we can't continue business as usual. This is why I fear a sleepy year uh, in the next 14-16 uh, months because we are uh, missing uh, great opportunities, but also because we are missing the support, the popular support. And we can't uh, have the European integration against the European people. And today the European people is against because of all these uncertainties and because of all these crises. This is why we, we need, in my view, to, to go further and to take seriously this referendum uh, because it, it is, in my view, the only win-win solution. You say in uh, English, when in trouble, go big. This is exactly what I think. Thank you.